What is going on, YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media, bringing you yet another episode of Pokemon X and Y. It's not an episode, it's a Wi-Fi battle. Why do I keep doing that? It's because I'm recording too many things at once, that's why. Well, not at once, not like simultaneous recording. It's more like I just like record back to back to back. You know what I'm saying. You know that I'm crazy. Anyway, uh, today's opponent is going to be Luis. We're doing a UU match, so that should be... Or not a UU, OU match. Oh, could I get anything else wrong? Could I butcher this intro any more? Is that possible? We'll see here. Um, before we get into the teams here, just want to remind you guys that as long as this video reaches that magical number of 50 likes, we're going to continue those double daily Wi-Fi uploads for you and all that stuff. Uh, so... Yeah, we're having an OU match, and I'm bringing a bunch of UU Pokemon. I've got Rotom Heat... Uh, which is UU. Slowbro is actually UU this generation. I thought it was OU, but that was in fact Gen 5. Shiftry is not OU either. Salamence was UU for a little while, um, but now I believe it's officially BL. I don't think it's OU. Not positive on that one, though. I just do know that it was UU for a little bit. I also have Conkledur and Tyranitar, both of which are obviously Oh, you, and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. On my opponent's side, he's got some interesting Pokemon as well. Mawile is UU, as well as Tyrantrum and Chandelure, and he's also got some OU threats as well uh, with Alakazam, Garchomp, and Azumarill. Now, as for Mega Evolutions, he's got the potential to have three with Garchomp, Alakazam, and Mawile, so I need to watch out for that. Most likely, though, it's going to be Mawile, because Garchomp and Alakazam work very well on their own. Mawile doesn't really so much, so... That is uh, basically the analysis that I would like to provide at the beginning here, and we'll just get into this and I'll explain more as we go along, and hopefully not screw more commentary up, because that would be nice. That would be really nice. So he's going to lead off with his Rotom. I'm... Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. I'm leading off with my Rotom. He's leading off with his Mawile. I jinxed myself. Definitely did. Uh, so he's going to predict the overheat switch into Chandelure for the Flash Fire, but I'm going to go for that safe Vault Switch. I guess it was, really wasn't that safe, though, because he could have predicted that and went into Garchomp to take that and then have me be locked into it and be screwed, and then he would get the Switch Priority, all that stuff. Um, but I think he just didn't want to predict too, too much and just go with the uh, Chandelure. But I'm going to bring in Shifri off the Vault Switch. And uh, the Sucker Punch, I guess it was kind of obvious, but there was nothing he could do about it except Switch. And, uh, you know, most of the time these things run choice sets. Chandelure, they like to run choice scarf. I've seen choice specs. They also like life orb some of the times. But all of those sets all have one thing in common is that they normally will run four attacking moves. So the Sucker Punch was going to kill no matter what. Now with the Tarantum in here, I decide to go into my Slowbro, which is still running lefties and not Rocky Helmet. I need to switch that back because I love Rocky Helmet Slowbro. He takes that Fire Fang very, very nicely. does absolutely nothing, even with that Strong Jaw boost. And uh, he's going to switch out into a Zoomerill, and I'm going to T-Wave, and that is actually bad news for me. I do not want this thing T-Waved. I would rather have it burn via Scald, because this Azumarill takes forever for me to kill. Uh, I swear, this takes up most of the battle, just me Scalding this Azumarill. I have no switch-ins for this thing. I have nothing that can switch in safely. If I try to switch in Rotom, predicting the play rough... Um, He's going to kill me, or could potentially kill me with an Aqua Jet or a Waterfall. Don't want to have that. If I try to predict, I don't know. I mean, both of his stabs are going to be super effective against Tyranitar. I just, I really don't have anything that I can bring in here. And the residual damage from the burn would have helped out a lot. He does miss the play rough there, so that is nice. And I do have the slack off on this Slowbro, so I'm not too, too worried about stalling this thing out. It doesn't have any reliable recovery. The most that it could have uh, would be a Citrus Berry. And I also didn't see any Wish Passers on his team, so if I can wear this thing down, even if I lose Slowbro, it will be worth it. Um, the Slowbro could also really help out with the Tyrantrum, but at this point, Azumarill is a way bigger threat to my team, and I just need to wear it down as much as possible to the point where I can kill it with something else, or just kill it with Slowbro himself. Uh, so I got him down to about half now. He's going to keep going for that play rough. Gets me down into the very low HP range in the uh, red zone, just out of the red zone, actually, with Lefty's recovery. Now I pretty much have to go for that slack off. He knows Aqua Jet isn't going to kill, and uh, so he's not going to go for that. He's just going to keep spamming the play roughs. And I know I can even uh, PP stall him if it comes down to that, because I'm not using slack off on every single turn. And uh, every couple of turns I get another Scald off. A crit or two would be nice, but... You know, who am I kidding? I don't really want him to get a crit either, so maybe maybe no crits. That would be nice. 
that would be nicer than him getting a crit. Uh, so I go for the slack off there, get myself back up to a decent amount of health, and he's going to get the attack drop, which really doesn't mean anything. It's not like I'm using physical attacks, but if I had the Rocky Helmet on this slowbro like I normally do, this would be a dead Azumarill at this point. This would not even be a stall off. This would be nothing. Um, it w he would be dead. And if I didn't T-Wave him, he'd be dead too, because he would definitely be burned by now. And uh, he would have died from the burn damage or had to switch out or something like that. That being said, he is going to switch out here after almost going down. He was really, really worn down there. He's going to go into the Alakazam to take the Scald. And it's still going to do a decent amount of damage. Slowbro has some decent special attack. I'm not invested in it. But it still does okay damage to this Alakazam. Maybe about 40%. 40, 45%, so I am fine with that. It also breaks any potential Focus Sash that this thing might be carrying. I know they like to carry Life Orb as well, so that is that is a possibility, but um, yeah, that's that. He's going to go for the Psychic as I switch into my Rotom Heat. I was expecting the Energy Ball. I guess I predicted that incorrectly. Thankfully, I didn't die from that hit because that would have sucked. I do go for the Volt Switch as he switches in the Garchomp, so that was just... That was a waste of Rotom Heat. Absolute waste. Thankfully, he doesn't have rocks up at this point, or Rotom Heat would be dead upon re-entry. Uh, he's going to go for the Dragon Claw, and Slowbro takes that like a champ. He takes those physical hits like it's nobody's business. It's amazing. I don't understand how he's UU right now. He should definitely be OU. Even last generation, he was one of OU's premier walls. Physical walls, that is. And it's just, you know, he's got the Regenerator. He's just got so much going for him. Uh, so I'm going to go for the Ice Beam, and he switches in the Tyrantrum. And I don't know if that was really a safe switch. I could have went for Skull. That would have been neutral damage on both Tyrantrum and Garchomp, and it has the chance to burn. But he might be running Lumberry on this thing, so that could have been why he switched in. And he has the Thunder Fang, which does decent damage. Not a lot for a super effective hit, but it does acceptable damage for a physical hit. I'm going to T-Wave him. And that is great for me. That means if you want to try to start setting up Dragon Dances or whatever it is that you want to do, you have no shot to do that. And I'm going to outspeed you as a Slowbro, which is sad. Very, very sad. It's a sad day when Slowbro is outspeeding anything. Uh, so in comes the Korag, the uh, Mawile, and I'm going to Scald it, hoping for the burn. That would be absolutely great. It does like 60% to this thing. Which is incredible. I was expecting more like 30%, but that just does so much damage. Now he's going to Mega Evolve. And uh, that's what I was thinking the Mega was going to be, but there's no way to be positive. I mean, I've seen Mawile used on its own without the Mega Evolution. It's not nearly as good. Um, and it doesn't really... It's not really a viable way to use Mawile, but uh, regardless. Anyway... Besides that point, um, he's going to get the crit on the Sucker Punch there, which is really unfortunate. I would have lived that, um, but Slowbro goes down to that Sucker Punch. Now I can bring in Salamence, though. I'm going to outspeed. He can't kill me off with a Sucker Punch. He doesn't have any Swords Dances up or anything. I'm going to get the Moxie Boost with the Earthquake, and that is very, very bad news for him. Very bad news. And uh, he can't bring in the Azumarill and get a Play Rough off. Aqua Jet's not going to kill from full health. But he does have Alakazam, which outspeeds me, goes for the Dazzling Gleam, and that destroys my hopes of sweeping. And I don't know why I didn't think of that. Um, I guess just because I don't ever run Dazzling Gleam on my Alakazam, I usually run Focus Blast and Energy Ball, um, and Shadow Ball as my coverage moves, but I guess I should start thinking about that because Fairy Typing is a decent coverage move, especially because Dark Types... Really got a buff with the um, nerf to steel typing that makes their their uh, stab so much more viable. But anyway, normally Alakazam is an all-attacking set. So again, bringing in the Shifri, going for the Sucker Punch is super effective. Alakazam goes down. Nothing you can do about that. Now in comes the Paralyzed Tyrantrum. I'm just going to go for the knockoff here. I'm not going to risk getting flinched. or well, I guess he wouldn't flinch because of the uh, paralysis. But whatever. I do knock off his Expert Belt, so that's actually a really cool move for Tyrantrum with all the different Elemental Fangs, because the chances of you getting a super effective hit are actually pretty high. And uh, Sucker Punch actually gets a crit on this Garchomp and takes it out in one hit. That did matter, Garchomp was not going to go down in one hit to that Sucker Punch, but to be fair, my Slowbro was not going to go down in one hit to that uh, Sucker Punch from a while earlier on, so we kind of traded crits there, I am okay with that. I do think that this one against Garchomp mattered a little bit more, though, so that is unfortunate. That much I don't like. 
Um, so the Azumarill does live a hit, and it's going to go for the Ice Beam. Ice Beam Azumarill! Amazing! So that's Play Rough and, and Ice Beam. That's just too cool. Too much fun. I'm going to bring in Tyranitar now, and uh, he can't really kill me in one hit. He would have to go for Super Power or Play Rough. He can't, you know, outspeed me because he is paralyzed. He would have to go for Aqua Jet to outprioritize me, and that's not going to kill me off in one hit, I do not believe. Uh, so I'm just going to go for a Crunch, and that's going to finish off this Azumarill. It didn't matter what move I went for, but I just wanted to uh, do something that had 100% accuracy. That's all that mattered to me. And I didn't really get a chance to use the Mega Tyranitar. I've been trying to, you know, work out a time to use Mega Tyranitar because I just... I haven't really seen it used too much, and I think it has a lot of potential for a Dragon Dance set. It gets a tiny buff in speed, not much, maybe 10 points, something like that. But uh, Tyranitar has long been considered way too slow to really abuse the Dragon Dance set, and that's why in previous generations, the Stealth Rocking Bulky sets and the Choice Band, and even Choice Scarf Tyranitar has been preferred over the Dragon Dance set, but I, na I think that now with this new Mega Evolution and the tiny bit of uh, speed increase that it does get makes Dragon Dance a... not necessarily, like, extra viable, but it's, it's worth a try, and it has a lot more ability to sweep because of that. Now, having said that, uh, that was a very good battle that Azumarill could have been potentially... Potentially uh, really bad for me, uh, to be honest, if I didn't have Slowbro. Again, I really wish I had that Rocky Helmet. That would have helped me out so many different times in this match because Slowbro took a ridiculous amount of physical hits that made you know physical contact in this, in this match. So I really needed to switch back to that. I don't know why I didn't because the last time I used Slowbro and it was Leftovers, I think I used Leftovers Slowbro one other time and I was complaining about it the entire time then and then... I just went and used it again instead of changing it, because that makes a lot of sense, right? Totally, for sure, and such. All right, well, that is going to be it for this time, guys. Thank you very much for watching, as always, and please do not forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. It does help out a lot, and uh, you guys are awesome for showing your support, by the way. I thank you very much for that, and uh, I will see you guys for the next battle, but until then, game on!